you must be thinking, what could you possibly do wrong on your Android smartphone? Well, believe me, there are numerous things that you are doing wrong on your Android device. In fact, if you are an Android user, this video is definitely a must watch for you. Hey guys, this is Rupesh from bbomb.com and today I am going to show you 8 things that you might be doing wrong on your Android device. These are simple things that really affect the working of your Android device. So without any further ado, let's get started. Android is a very capable platform when it comes to multitasking. Like the desktop platforms, Android lets you run multiple apps at the same time. And you can switch between apps without having to start over with the task. However, most people tend to clear off the app cards from the multitasking interface in a bit to speed up the device. Well, that's not how it works. In fact, it does the opposite. Android is very good at managing RAM. So when you have a ton of apps open in the background and there's shortage of RAM, Android automatically closes an app that you might have not used for a long time. On the other hand, when you kill an app manually or use a task killer app, the app is slow to open when you launch it again. Plus, it uses additional resources, making your phone slow and draining your battery. So yeah, don't use task killer apps or kill apps manually. I know swiping off the app cards in the multitasking screen can be quite fun, but let Android do the job. Chances are this question has crossed your mind. Do antivirus apps actually do anything on Android? Honestly, I don't think they are necessary. Google brings great protection to Android on the device level as well as the cloud. The Google Play services in Android features various scanning services and security services, thus making sure that Android users are safe from potential harmful applications and risks. In fact, various developers of the security apps know the risks are low and thus bring additional features in the app to make sure that they can market the app. For instance, the Norton Antivirus app brings anti-theft, backup and call blocking features along with virus protection. So as long as you download apps from the Play Store, download content from reputable sources, you should be fine when it comes to security. App permissions can be nefarious to say the least. There are several apps that take up unnecessary permissions. Some permissions do make sense, but there are various dangerous permissions like telephone, phone state, messages, storage, etc. that you should be wary of. While there are various malicious apps that take up unnecessary permissions, even the popular apps do so. For instance, the highly popular UC browser takes the phone permission. Now why would a browser need the telephone permission? Now this is a permission even Chrome does not require. While UC browser says it needs the info to check screen resolution, it's not really true because apps don't need any user data to get the screen resolution. Also when you check the permissions UC browser is taking in MIUI's China ROM, it shows that it is accessing data like device ID, IMEI and IMSI number, which presents a privacy risk for users. If you ask me, I don't think you should be using apps like these. Android lets you manually clear cache of apps. And if you're using an app that promises to free up storage, it does so too by clearing the cache of the apps. Again, this is not good. The cache of apps features the most regularly used data of an app to make sure that it loads up faster and already has some content to show you when you open it up. For instance, when you open up Facebook, the app already has the profile pictures of various profiles and the content loaded in the past saved as cache. However, when you clear the cache of the app, all the saved data is gone and the app opens up afresh, which means all the operations in the app will start from scratch which will make the app slow to load while also taking up more resources, thus draining the battery faster. However, if you do want to free up some storage, you can head to settings, here go to storage, where you will find the space all the cache data is taking up. Here you can just clear all the cache data with just a tap. The ability to install apps via APK files on Android is very handy indeed. While this lets you install apps that might not be available for your device or in your country, this flexibility of Android has also resulted in piracy and security issues. 
Android APKs can be easily tampered to inject malicious code. And while these apps look and feel the same as the apps they are cloning, they access personal data. We are talking key logging, identity theft and much more. So just make sure that you install apps from the Play Store only or from reliable APK sources. Also, stop searching for free APK versions of paid Android apps because it really affects your device and also takes away from the hard work of the developers. There are various cool apps that use your device's sensors to bring you some great functionality, but not everything is great about it. For instance, there's the Wave Control app, which lets you control media playback by just waving on the proximity sensor. Then there's Kin Screen, which lets you wake up the device through a gesture on the proximity sensor. While these apps are cool, they make sure that your device's battery goes down the drain. In fact, in the past, my phone's power button was broken. So I used to use skin screen to wake up the device. Well, what can I say? The battery drainage was so annoying, I regretted not getting the power button fixed. So yeah, these sensor apps are pretty cool if you want to show off your device, but they're not very battery friendly. Another myth of the Android world is that battery saver apps actually save your battery. Trust me, they don't. And they drain your battery even faster. The various battery saver apps try and save your device's battery by killing apps running in the background, lowering brightness, turning Wi-Fi, Bluetooth off, etc. Well, these are some things that you can do yourself. Plus, these apps are pretty intensive in themselves and constantly use the network to bring you ads and annoying notifications. While some root apps like Greenify do a good job of optimizing battery, your usual battery saver apps do not. While mobile devices are designed to be powered on all the time, I believe switching them off from time to time is probably a good idea. Rebooting your phone once a week should make sure that your battery is healthy as batteries on phones have a finite lifespan and the more you use them, the faster they wear out. Plus, restarting your phone also resets the cache in the system and also helps with the diagnostics. So restart your phone, once in a week should be good enough. Well, those were 8 things that you might be doing wrong on your Android device. Stop doing these and I'm sure you'll notice improved performance on your Android smartphone. Well, that was all from my side. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment if you have any doubts and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.